us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Dove, with all thy quickening power, kindle a flame of sacred love in these cold, cold hearts of ours. Come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening power, come shed abroad the Savior's love, and that shall kindle ours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I greet you this evening in the wonderful name of Jesus, who is our Savior. Amen. To the very able presiding elder of the Kansas City District, yes, Reverend Seth Moulton, gracious and charming First Lady of the District, Mrs. Rose Moulton, yes. host pastor for these services, and glad she made it back from North Carolina, Amen. Reverend Amen. Smith. Amen. Amen. Y'all yeah, can give praise for Amen. God giving her safe passage. Amen. To my friend and brother, Reverend Michael Murray, Amen. pastor Amen. here of Metropolitan Church, and to the First Lady, Reverend Carmen Murray, in her absence, Amen. to our district, Director of Evangelism, Reverend Pegee, who has taken his sweet time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Shannon Hancock, our Conference Director of Evangelism. Amen. We continue to pray for her. Amen. Reverend Kelsey Hobson, Amen. Chair of the Board of Evangelism for the conference. To all of the proclaimers of the gospel of Jesus Christ right. assembled here tonight, well. to other district and conference officers present, to the sons and daughters of Barry yes. mm -hmm. assembled tonight, I want to thank Reverend Pegui again for this invitation and for his presentation Amen. of me tonight. Let's praise God for the choir. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 And certainly we thank God, as presiding elder Moulton said, for the young lady, the United Praise Dancer, yeah. who was determined. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You can't let the devil speak. Stop your progress. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful again tonight to have my bride with me. Amen. Amen. I, I, I really, I, I know nobody's excited about her being here but me, but that's all right. That's all right. After all, she is married to me. More and more, people are saying that these are tough times. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And regardless to how we try, our situations don't seem to be getting any better. In fact, in many aspects, things are worse. The leadership of our country leaves us much to pray about. The pain is exacerbated daily with every tweet from the White House. Well, well. 
what am I to do? What can I do? What should I do? I'm stressed. I'm nervous. I'm depressed. I'm frightful. I'm fearful. I don't want to be negative or pessimistic. But reality is staring me in the face. What must I do? I could lose my job in the morning. My home, my life, my car. What shall I do? We're not unlike the disciples who follow, ate, slept, and had the privilege daily of face-to-face -face dialogue with Jesus. His response to them in a like situation was four words. And we who have been called to teach how to cope and why to hope may well be advised to tune in to Jesus' conversation in Mark chapter 11, verses 20 through 22. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree well. dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus Answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Yes. 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 Our theme for these services is times such as these. Yes, the subject for tonight is four words for these tough times. Have faith in God. At first glance, Jesus' response almost suggests that he didn't hear Peter's remark. At first glance, the reader would think that this is a wild, out of the blue, left field response to Peter's observation. But understanding the history and the contextual implication of Jesus' response is critical. What was he saying to the disciples? Well, verses 12 through 14 give us some help. The time of this happening was the toughest time in Jesus' ministry. It was the Monday morning of the last week of Christ's earthly ministry. He and his disciples left Bethany and they were hungry. In the distance, Jesus sees a fig tree, something that could curb their hunger. Upon approach, he observed that the tree, though filled with leaves, had no fruit. The 13th verse even suggests the reason why there was no fruit. 
For the time of figs was not yet. Well, look with me at a few particulars about the fig tree. First of all, the fig tree was common to the area. Like steel to Pittsburgh, coal to West Virginia, cars to Detroit, oranges to Central Af uh, Florida, deep dish pizza to Chicago, and barbecue to Kansas City. Y'all said that like I had barbecue up here with me. <laughs> this also made the fig tree a critical element in the local economy. In fact, in Jeremiah 24, the fig was a symbol of peace, security, and prosperity. As such, the people relied on, depended on, and put their trust in the fig tree's ability to yield an abundant crop. All right, sir. All right. Thus, the fig became a staple yes, sir. of the economy. Yes. Mark eleven thirteen tells us that Jesus went seeking fruit and he found nothing but leaves. We are left a bit surprised even as we read 13b. For in 14, Jesus initiates seemingly an act of injustice, Mercy. seeing that it was not the season for figs. Why should he expect fruit when it was not the season? Well, the fig experts help us out here. There is a kind of first ripe fig before the time of the full harvest of figs. The tree always put its fruit out first and then the leaves to protect the fruit from the intense rays of the sun. Consequently, any leaves at all were an indication that the fruit was present. Yet, you see the time of our text was the month of April. Since the fig bloomed and yielded fruit three times a year, a first fig early would ripen in the month of April. The summer fig would ripen in August and be the best. And the fall fig would ripen in December and was known as the sycamore fig. This was a fact of nature known by Jesus and all of them with him. Thus Jesus knowing that this tree was one producing figs before leaves. When he saw nothing but leaves, yes, it was an indication, a motive of deceit. You see, leaves suggested fruitfulness, but fruit was lacking and indicated a false development of show and appearance. Mercy. You all don't know anybody like that. The tree had failed in its purpose and thus it was stricken with destruction by the curse of Jesus. What a lesson that it says to us deceit and hypocrisy are certain areas for cursing. All right. All right. All right. It was the fig tree hypocrisy that Jesus cursed. All right. 
look like you got fruit. But under close examination, you don't have any fruit at all. You're fronting like you got fruit. But when push comes to shove, you don't have anything to back up your talk. You talk good, but there's nothing else to you but talk. Say, Reverend, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? No, no, no. Listen, listen. We come when, when, when people come to church. I'm so glad you got me a round trip ticket. <laughs> when people come to church and before the first note is played on the piano or the organ, they're on the floor. And you can't sit them down until everybody has left church. But they are going to praise supposedly the Lord. But when trouble comes to their house, somehow the praise that they had on Sunday morning is not existent on Monday morning. The praise that they had in Bible study doesn't exist on the job on Thursday morning. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about, I know it's nobody on the Kansas City district. I, I know it's nobody at St. Paul Church. Nobody at any of these other churches. But there are places where folk raise pure. <laughs> Don't put out leaves. Out there like you're something if you don't have anything. The world is not looking for leaves. The world is looking for fruit. They're looking for fruit when they come up on you. When, when they pull the leaves back, you ought to have something there. When they move the leaves back, you ought to have something that goes along with your testimony. When they pull the leaves back, you still ought to be able to say this joy the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away from me in verse 14 let me, I, let me hear it in verse 14 Jesus says no man will eat fruit Hereafter, forever. That's a curse. Let's expand on the idea of a godly curse versus a curse from man. Man's desire is to wish harm and hurt. The divine has the ability to impose or invoke judgment at will. In other words, man can only wish you ill, but God can impose it or ignore a curse at his will. Thus with his word comes forth the power that kept back the sap in the earth from the root of the tree. You see, when Jesus withdraws the means of grace. Immediately, the withering process of death and destruction begins. Verse 20 is a manifestation of a godly curse. The fig tree is dried up from the roots. Listen, today, experts say it's a sluggish economy. It's an, an elongated downturn. 
that is certain to have bottomed out. It's a global imbalance. It's the free market versus imports. The freeze on exports. But I see something different here. I see, and if you will pay attention, you will too. You will see pillars and staples and rocks of Gibraltar as we have known them drying up. One day business, businesses, companies, city governments are profitable. And the next day, they dried up and filed chapter 11. One day, we have clean water. And the next day, we have tainted water. You see, when employers constantly deceive those who produce their products, allow unfair practices to prevail over their workers, permit unequal pay because of the color of your skin versus the quality of your work. Promote based on networking versus qualifications. They may be profitable today, but tomorrow they'll dry it up. I remember businesses spread throughout this country that wouldn't let us eat at their lunch counter. Yeah, yeah. They're all dried up. Yeah. Today, companies took unfair advantage of black people all over this country. And right now, those companies are dried up. You can't do wrong and keep on doing wrong and think you gonna get away with it. God in his own time, God in his own way, works the thing so that it comes back to your door. Just look, just look at our metro cities. Once they were booming. You couldn't get a job in some of these places. But now they're all dried up. And they want to know what happened. Somebody left. Yes, this country walked away from the God that it had served. This country walked away from the God that had made a way out of no way. This country. The very money that we walk around with in our pocket says in God we trust. Yes. Uh, yes. But in light of all this drying up, it, seem, I, it seems I hear Jesus saying to Peter, to the disciples, to you and to me today, have faith in God. Yes. Have faith yes. in God. Yes. Whatever else you do, you make sure your faith is in him. And faith in God is not just some religious calisthenics that we engage in. Faith in God is certainly what one has to have in times such as this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't care what you say. You've got to have faith in God. Because faith in God is, is, is not something that looks good sometimes. But it's what you have to have all the time. Huh? All the time. You, 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 you got to have faith in God when you come to church. Because now you can't come to church and think you're going to get back home. Because somebody may walk in with a mental illness and an AK-47 and start shooting at the lights and everything else in the church. You gotta have faith. I know y'all.
y'all tired of me? Hallelujah. I, but I need to tell you four things right quick, and I'll get out of your way. First of all, you avoid faith in self. All right, that's good. Self confidence is an essential virtue. Self esteem is a critical character trait. Positive thinking is an important mental state of mind. Proverbs 28, 26 tells us, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. I just came by here on my way to glory to tell somebody, don't overvalue your star. Don't exaggerate your word. Don't allow yourself to become the object of your faith. To be caught up in your accomplishment. I, I, I'm gl I glory in anybody's spunk. But you stop telling folk you pulled yourself up by your own bootstrap. You didn't have boot nor strap the first. If it hadn't been for the Lord who was on your side, tell me where would you be? Don't you think you did it? You look at yourself and say, God, I want to thank you. You woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. You gave me the ability to put the plan together that moved the company. God, I thank you. Self-faith is dangerous. Self-value is great. But remember what Paul tells us in Romans 12, 3, that not to think more highly of yourselves than you ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. You got to get to the place where you say, God, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. Lord, you have been my burden bearer. Lord, you have been my midnight company keeper. Lord, you've been my water when I got thirsty. Lord, you've been my bread when I was hungry. You've been my shelter in the time of a storm. I wish there was somebody in here tonight that knows I never would have made it. I never should have made it if it hadn't been. If it hadn't been. For the Lord. Secondly, secondly. Avoid faith in the system. Listen. Look around you. I just told you, it's drying up. Hmm? Yeah, that's what's wrong. And that's what's wrong with the folk who have perceived themselves in power. Everything they have trusted has slipped through their fingers. It has become sands through the hourglass. It slipped through their fingers. And they're wondering, how do you pick it up? It's hard to pick up sand. You ever picked up sand? And tried to get it to stay in your hand? That's what's wrong with America today. It has trusted in itself too long. Listen, I've discovered that stocks split. Dows crumble. Banks fail. Corporations divest. Companies downsize. Insurance companies fold up. People change. Lights go out. Crowds get thin. 
friends walk away from you. Any way you look at it, the system is shaking. I got to tell you this and I'm going to go on. Communism is an ideology that's bankrupt. Socialism is an experiment that has failed. Capitalism is a dream that has become a nightmare. The system is too shaky. Everywhere you look, it's falling apart. The only system that is standing sure today is the sim system that declares the Lord is my light and my salvation. The only system that is holding up today is the system that declares though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The only system that is lasting now is the system that says if I lose everything I have and I still have Jesus, I've got enough to start off. Thirdly, thirdly, quickly. Avoid faith in the saints. And I'm talking about the folk that try to get you. Now, I've got this handkerchief. If you buy this handkerchief, send me a hundred dollars. Send me a hundred dollars. And if you, when you get this handkerchief, if you put it on your left big toe for three hours in the month. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all know I'm right about it. Y'all know I'm right. Folk will do it. You know, they'll send it to Reverend What's His Face. They'll name it and they'll claim it. Listen here, you better take your blood pressure medicine. You better take that diabetes medicine. But when you take it, you take it in faith. That you know that God is going to make you well. Even if he has to use medicine, he can heal your body through the medicine. And you got to know in whom you have believed. And I, finally, finally, have faith in God. Everything else will fail you. I told you, jobs will leave you. Friends will leave you. Family will leave you. But if your faith is in God, I heard somebody say in, 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 in Hebrews that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Creative power of the divine. I read that faith can counsel natural law. It's the only way to please God. Faith is counting things that are not as though they were. In other words, I, I can't see how God is making a way for me. But I'm going to keep my faith in him that if I have to suffer, I know that somehow God's going to bring me out. That if I suffer, then I will ultimately gain the victory for me to live is Christ. Hey, but also, if I die, it's also gain. I understand that, that I've got to have faith if I'm going to live this life. For you see, faith was Joseph's authority. Faith was Jacob's recognition. Faith was Moses' declaration. Faith was Jacob's miracle. Faith was Rahab's deliverance. Faith in God was Gideon's victory. Faith was Samson's strength and David's reliability. Faith was Samuel's integrity. A little faith will bring your soul to heaven. A great faith will bring heaven to your soul. Faith is not believing that God can. Faith is believing that God will. How are you going?
to face and triumph in these tough times. My faith looks up to thee, thy Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. You got to tell somebody, I don't care who's the president. My faith is in God. I don't care who's the speaker of the house. My faith is in God. I don't care who's the majority leader. My faith is in God. I don't care who's the minority leader. My faith is in God. They can give a tax break to the 1%, but God will still take care of his child. When the seniors have to struggle and decide between medicine and food, have faith in God. I don't care what you do, have faith in God. I, I gotta go tonight. One evening, a young Air Force captain at Wheeler's Air Force Base in Tripoli came striding in to the provident prosper uh, to the men's banquet protestant men's banquet very late and they were all but finished eating and he was still in his flying gear he walked to the front of the room wrapped for attention and once he had everybody's attention he said i i want to thank you for being here with the strain of the day yet lingering on his brow Mercy. he said I need you to know that I was flying out of Turkey this morning and my radio kept going in and out and finally it went out and it stayed out he said when I got here as I approached the field I let my landing gear down he said, but as I approached, I realized my landing gear didn't go down. I circled the field one time, and it didn't go down. I circled again, and it still didn't go down. He said, and, 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 and I was trying to figure out, what am I going to do? Am I, am I going to do a belly landing or what? He said, and then I heard something in my spirit yes. told me to circle one more time yes. he said I circled the last time and the landing gear came down he said I landed safely and I had to come in here tonight to tell you I want you to know I came in here tonight to tell somebody when your landing gear won't go down just circle one more time when folk tell you to give up, circle one more time. When they laugh at you, circle one more time. God is still in control in times like these. I need a savior. In times like these, I need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock.